It's been a few months since I've recorded a video for this series, but welcome to, I guess, visiting slash talking about different K-pop entertainment companies. I just want to give a disclaimer. I found all of this information online. I do give my opinions. If I say anything that is wrong, feel free to correct me in the comments down below. Today, we're focusing on Fantasio Corporation. Let's go visit the place first and then I'll I'll talk more there. Fun fact, this used to be the old SM Town building before they moved to Songju. Fantasio moved into this old SM Town building in 2021. Yeah, it's a pretty nice building. As you can see, it's on top of a Hyundai store. It just looks like a very ordinary building in the middle of Cheongdam, which is a very expensive area. So you know that they've gotten a lot more money compared to when they started out. They still didn't take this sign off from when this was SM Town's building, but I don't know why they kept it here. You're annoying. <laughs> okay, so I'm just gonna film the rest of this video in my room because it's way too cold outside. So let's go over the main timeline for Fantasio. Basically in 2008, this guy named Na Byung-jun founded Network of Asia. That's what Fantasio was founded as before they changed the name in 2011. This dude, he used to work for Cytus HQ, which is another entertainment company that focuses mainly on actors. Right now, Cytus HQ is under Kakao M, a very big entertainment corporation owned by obviously Kakao. Like if you don't know how big Cytus is, they basically brought in actors like Kong Yu from Goblin, Song Joong Gi from Descendants of the Sun, and they also made one of K-pop's iconic first gen groups, G.O.D. So a lot of my parents' generation listened to G.O.D. They're not really our generation, but they did pave a very big path for current artists. So you know this guy has a pretty good resume because he worked at a pretty good entertainment company before. At first, they started by just managing talent. Later, they shifted their focus to training singers and actors. So then in 2011, they rebranded themselves and renamed their company as Fantasio Corporation. It's basically a mix of the two words fantasy and origin. I don't know why. Then they had their project called iTeen, which was supposed to focus on creating idol groups. With this project, they split into two teams. One was called iTeen Boys and the other was called I Teen Girls. I Teen Boys eventually formed into Astro, and then I Teen Girls was a project that eventually formed into Weki Meki. They also had their own actors program called Acting League, and I'll talk a little bit more about what that led into later. So their first group, it was in 2012 with Hello Venus, and this was kind of a joint project with Pledis Entertainment. Pledis took on more of the, oh, we'll train their singing and dancing abilities. Fantasio took on more of the, we'll be more in charge of their acting activities. Personally, I know Hello Venus had a few bops here and there. This was like second gen era, a little bit past Girls' Generation and Super Junior. They're pretty much overshadowed by all of the other artists. <laughs> That didn't age well. I don't really think they brought anything new to the table, so they kind of died out. I think because this was just Fantasio's first group, they were still learning the ropes of how to manage artists and how to really break into the industry. Then in 2013, Fantasio made their first acting group, which came from the actors program Acting League, and this was called Surprise. But the S is with the five because there's five members. Wow, so unique and innovative cool so a lot of the actors in this group actually did get pretty popular or they did become successful later on Yu was their leader but in my opinion he has the least reputable acting career he was in a lot of smaller works then Yi Taehwan I feel like his breakout role was 39 that is pretty recent so I'm sure he'll land bigger roles in the future then Kang Tae he was in my first first love his main breakout role is extreme 
Extraordinary Attorney Wu, which I'm sure you've watched or heard of. Then we have Kong Myung, who is a very interesting character. His breakout role was The Bride of Havoc. Personally, I don't think that did that well. To me, it's kind of a goblin knockoff, but he was featured with a lot of other big name cast members in that drama, so I feel like that helped heighten his career. And another interesting fact about him is he's Toyoung from NCT's brother. They're both in the industry, but right now I think he's in the military. And the very last member of Surprise is Hogang Jung. His breakout role was Cheese in the Trap, which I honestly didn't think did super well. I liked it, but I feel like it didn't get a lot of popularity. But after that, he was in a lot of commercials and ads and CFs. I can't really think of anything that he's been in recently in terms of acting. But I know there was this one period of time when everybody was talking about him and saying oh he's so handsome he was all the girls like ideal types but yeah all of these members they left Fantasio Entertainment eventually and so currently they're at other companies then we're moving on to 2016 which is when they debuted their first boy group Astro I'm sure you know who Astro is just because of Cha Unu <laughs> I feel like this group has basically become Cha Unu and friends. Even though everybody else is working really hard and doing relatively okay, it's just hard when there's one person in the group who has so many more opportunities than everybody else. So before they officially debuted, they actually starred in their own K-drama to be continued, which was just a short little web series that also featured a lot of other Fantasio actors like people from Surprise, even Hello Venus. Yeah, this K-drama was as cheesy as a web drama can get, so I'd watch it, but don't set your standards up there. Eventually, this group made subunits Jinjin and Rocky, and then Moonbin and Sana. In my opinion, I feel like this was mainly because Chaonu was so busy doing his solo activities that he couldn't really participate in any group activities that often, so they had to form these subgroups so that the other members could have things to do while Chaonu was busy popping off. Just going over the members really quickly, in my personal opinion, Rocky is a very underrated fourth gen dancer. I don't, I think he's third gen actually. I, I'm pretty sure this group is third gen. I think his movement quality and just how he's able to connect all the moves together effortlessly, it's insane. But I feel like he doesn't get enough credit for it. That spin though. Moonbin and Sana, they're always put together because of their subunit. I feel like their subunit did get a lot more attention than Rocky and Jinjin's because of Water Bomb. There's this really famous clip where they both take off their shirt and this became a huge thirst trap video. <laughs> Another member, MJ, he ventured into the musical theater sector of entertainment and he did pretty well, but right now he's in the military. Jinjin Jin is a rapper and his nickname is the slow rapper because when he talks, he's slow. But to be honest, I feel like Jinjin Jin is the most overshadowed by all of the other members in the group, unfortunately. I completely forgot to talk about Chao Nu. Please don't cancel me. You should already know who he is. Everyone says his face is literally perfect. I feel like his breakout role was definitely True Beauty because he played the main character. Because of his good looks, he's been casted in many dramas and he works with a lot of brands. I feel like a lot of this group's publicity does come from Chao Nu. So with this group, they're coming close to their contract expiration date. They're waiting for MJ to be discharged from the military to talk to him about what his plans are, whether to renew or not to renew. Rock Rocky is still on the fence about renewing, but the rest of the members are confirmed to renew their contract with Fantasio. In my opinion, I feel like they should all go solo, except for Moonbin and Sana, because Moonbin and Sana are doing well as a subunit. The way they're operating as a group right now, they're already acting like they're separate solo artists. I feel like individually they're very talented, but because they're packaged as a group, they just get compared to each other and it's very easy for them to outshine each other. Moving on to the rest of 2016, this was the start of kind of a lot of CEO switches in the company. Basically a TLDR, there was some drama about shares of the company and eventually this Chinese investment company, they obtained most of the shares and then that gave them the power to appoint their own CEO. So they did that. And then because of that, a lot of actors and key staff in the company 
they left and then after that there were a lot of ceo switches too which i'm not going to go too in depth into then in 27 they debuted their second girl group weki meki what's special about this group is they had produce 101 contestants che yujong and kim doyeon there was a lot of hype surrounding that obviously after ioi split off people were wondering what everybody's next steps were i'm not going to go too deeply into all the individual members fun fact surprisingly weki meki was in my spotify top five artists last year but it's because i used to listen to a lot of their music when i was at the gym working out some of their songs were very like go go girl crush and it's honestly a really good motivator so if you need to work on something and be motivated i highly recommend their music personally i feel like fantasio didn't really market weki meki a lot because they were so focused on other things i think with more of a proper marketing plan and more resources put into weki meki they could have done pretty well i wouldn't say the ioi members that went into this group were my favorites but i have to acknowledge that che yujung had really good performance skills if you saw the video from their bang bang performance <laughs> She really slay. She also sang this really hard Korean song on this Korean singing variety show. Kim Doyeon, she started pursuing acting more. She's been in a couple of K-dramas. Other than that, this group has been pretty much radio silent, but I don't think they've officially disbanded yet. It's just sad because I know they had lots of potential, but they just didn't make it. That's Wiki Miki, not Weki Meki, but I think Weki Meki sounds better, but in general, this name is just not it. It refers to the eight individually different girls holding a key that helps them identify each other, allowing them to meet and create Weki. This does not make any sense at all. Another honorable mention I want to give is, I always have a hard time saying his name, Ong Ong Songu. If you don't know who he is, he was on Produce 101, the second season. He debuted with 101, and right now he's focusing a lot on his acting career. According to an all K pop article, him and Cha Unu are the biggest money makers. They're basically hard carrying Fantasio right now. Fantasio does put a lot more emphasis on just the acting side of things, and their current roster of actors that they've signed isn't as successful as the older generation roster who have now left but yeah what are your thoughts on fantasio and their artists who's your favorite would you want to debut in a group with this company and also what company would you like me to talk about and visit next feel free to let me know in the comments down below thank you so much for watching this video i'll see you in the next one